Right, and so the meeting is over, but the issues remain and they intend to fight it. One of the good things to come out of this con uh, the ECOWAS conference, for instance, is the issue of Ebola. I mean, it's scared the whole continent, but some commitment has been made. We'll talk more about it and uh, also look at trade, especially the EPA, which I know a lot of Ghanaians were particularly furious. Trade, they think that, well, perhaps it will cripple business in Ghana, but we're in the process of signing it. And we have been joined in the studio by Ben Luchim Malo, who is the head of communication at the presidency. Good afternoon, sir. And thank you so much for joining us in our studio. Good afternoon. Thanks uh, for having me. Great. I want to start on Ebola. I mean, mm -hmm. good. Nigeria, for instance, it wants to commit $3 million. That's huge. But how will it be spent in terms of, is it in research? Where? How will the money go in? Thanks. Uh, President Goodluck Jonathan has to be commended for grabbing the bull by the horns. And in the gathering of all his fellow leaders under the chairmanship of President John Dramani Mahama, he offered the three million US dollars almost immediately. Number one, it goes one million dollars goes into a fund that is going to address the Ebola. And then five hundred thousand dollars each for Liberia, for Sierra Leone, for Guinea, and for the West African Health Organization. And this will go, I heard Honorable Sherry Ayite explain it that sometimes the difference in dealing with the crisis is just having the appropriate clothing to protect those who are dealing with those infected. But the issue is we should not be alarmist. This is a matter of serious concern for all of us. The experts are giving us information as to how to address it, information about what we eat, how we handle our dead bodies, and then to remain vigilant vigilant in our own hygiene, vigilant on our borders, and, and also to basically uh, support the government. Other nations have been called upon to also contribute, follow the example of Nigeria, to contribute. And it can be contained. It can be eliminated in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, in Guinea. It doesn't have to spread into other nations. Once we are vigilant and we take the right steps with the support of the international community to address it. All right. How about Ghana's own commitment? to Ebola? Because I know, I mean, recently there was a scare. One white person died of fever. Eventually it was confirmed that it wasn't Ebola. But of course, we're all on the alerts. Where's Ghana commitment in all of this? I think point number one, we all need to reinforce the fact that the tests that were done on the suspected case proved negative. So sure. we don't have Ebola in Ghana. That doesn't mean we shouldn't take it seriously or we shouldn't pay attention. Ghana's commitment, as well as the commitment of all the other member states, are expected in the next few days to see who else is contributing towards the fund so that resources are available. The international community, I think the World Health Organization, you realize, organized a big meeting of health ministers here last week. And uh, Honorable Sherry Ayite was involved. The communique actually demanded that Ebola be put on the agenda of this summit that ended yesterday. So a lot of commitment is there. President Mahama is committed, as he stated in his address to the gathering and to the public, that Ebola can be eliminated. We must do everything together as a community to address it. All right. Then the issue of biometric uh, came up also and the good thing is I mean it would be easy for all of us to move around I mean, imagine you go to another country I mean yeah of course they, there's no issue of passports and whatnot but the others have raised concerns about it I mean we have our own security issues Nigeria has its own security challenges how are we going to streamline and address those concerns that have been raised even though it has well potential to be good point number one is this a good idea is this a brilliant idea I believe it is Point number two, you had my president, our president, chairman of ECOWAS, President Mahama, stated there that, look, concerns, as you are expressing, are genuine and must be tackled. Just as we are doing this for good people and for the good of our people, you're probably going to find that there will be some bad elements in society who would also want to go in there. I think there is a proverb, if not in Ewe, but maybe in Chui or <laughs> among our can speaking brothers and sisters, that says that if you close your eyes, you're standing by the roadside, you close your eyes to the bad people who are passing by, then you will miss out on seeing the good people too. So the fact that this is a good idea and it can be uh, maybe infiltrated by bad elements doesn't mean that it shouldn't be considered and looked at. The process is ongoing. President Mahama stated that now the 
ministers who are responsible for security in all the ECOWAS nations will now have to sit down and address some of the concerns you've just expressed, which are genuine concerns. And so there is a lot more work to be done in the background by the ministers, by the experts to say, this good idea of biometric ID cards, removal of residence permit requirements, how can we make sure that this benefits our people the best possible way? Right. I, I, even in, internally in Ghana, I mean, the issue of national identification, I mean, people have either waiting for their IDs or they don't have them and whatnot. Now we're uh, stretching it a bit further to the ECOWAS sub-region. How do we... How, how, how do you assure people and give them that confidence that, listen, uh, well, yeah, it will get better, but we're working really hard at eliminating the problems. How do you convince someone? Great ideas, number one. Number two... Uh, we, do, we are not disputing that. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you're disputing it. I'm just taking the steps, number sure. one. Number two, how do you implement this in the best possible way? Number three... How do you... So how the question, I'm how do you implement that. it? Just bear with me. <laughs> you and I, we're not having a fight. <laughs> All right. We're just having a good discussion. And let me just say, this is number three. Right here in Accra, I attended an event not quite a month ago at the uh, local government premises in Medina, where the governing party, the National Democratic Congress, rolled out their own biometric card made in Ghana, everything yeah, done in Ghana. Yeah. That is a classic example of what we can do when we are determined and committed to doing it. It doesn't mean it will not be without problems. But as long as the idea is good, that is why I started from there. And we have the commitment, and we can get the technology to do it. An example exists. Maybe that example can be expanded. That example can be refined. In terms of monetary implications? I mean, money yeah, sure. for doing the biometric? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's a regional thing. It's not just Ghana's own. Well, I don't have the specifics. And I can just tell you that I think if we can get Honorable Hannah Tete, who is the foreign minister, she, she's been in many more meetings where these things have been discussed, or other colleagues who are well versed in this. But the issue is let's agree it can be done, it's a good thing, it will make life easier for many people. Let me give you this example. I served in Liberia for two years as the spokesperson for the UN mission. I met Ghanaian soldiers together with all other foreigners over there. At the same time, I met Ghanaian fishermen who are working in Liberia, people will tell you the best fish go to this area, the Ghanaians do the job well. Those people, if they have this biometric ID card, means that they can live and work in Liberia without complications. In Senegal, Ghanaian fishermen, again, are doing good, remitting a lot of money back to build houses here. Those Ghanaians, as well as in any other ECOWAS state, deserve that freedom to profit or do profitable work. All right, un unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I wanted you to quickly touch on EPA. Uh, the president mentioned that, well, we, we, they need to be, he mentioned in, in terms of language, they need to be translated for everybody to understand, and they need to be ratified. The qu my question simply is, what sort of ratification needs to be done before we sign? I think approval, from what I see in the communique, sure. they have approved in principle. Absolutely. But still, the chief negotiators have been called upon to deal with some technical issues. Concerns that have been raised and concerns that are genuine. How is this going to affect our export abilities? They are being addressed seriously. Nobody How is it going to cripple local industries? That's the concern a lot of Ghanaians are There are, I've seen adverts where some Ghanaians are saying we can double our output for export to Europe if this EPA is agreed. I've heard that. I've okay. seen that. But the, everybody's concern is being addressed. President Mahama is sensitive to all these concerns and wants to make sure that whatever is agreed is beneficial to the people of Ghana and for all of West Africa. All right. Bender Timala, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. Always a pleasure to thank have you. you. And you're watching Midday Live on TV3. Uh, we'll take a what do you think and we'll continue. So if you have any uh, comment at all, send us via our social media platform at News on TV3 for Twitter, News on TV3 for Facebook. You like our page and post your thoughts there or our website, tv3network.com.